Hello everyone, I welcome you all for this course on petroleum refining processes. In this course, we shall see various operations which are used in petroleum refining industry. In this lecture, we shall look at the basic of petroleum refinery, which is an overview. Although chemistry has been studied for centuries, large scale production of many organic chemicals has been practiced only for last 150 years. The earlier chemical processes depended mainly upon coal as the main feedstock. Crude oil became the major feedstock over last 100 years or so due to the abundant and inexpensive supply of petroleum crude oil. Crude oil is a mixture of hundreds of organic chemicals, predominantly the hydrocarbons. The main feedstock for chemical industry today is crude oil. Crude oil, as I mentioned earlier, is a mixture of hundreds of chemicals consisting of carbon and hydrogen. Other minor elements are oxygen, nitrogen, sulfur and phosphorus. Crude oil as such may not have any utility. It is therefore refined and upgraded to more useful products, predominantly fuels and many organic petrochemicals. Let us look at processing of crude oil. Typical operations used in refining are first washing and desalting, then distillation both atmospheric as well as under vacuum, light ends processing, extraction and distillation, and major chemical reactions are alkylation, hydrogen manufacturing, hydro cracking, hydro processing, catalytic reforming, steam cracking, catalytic cracking, whiz breaking, coking, sulfur recovery and lubricant manufacturer, LPG manufacturer and then finally the petrochemical manufacturing. The first operation is washing and desalting. Temperature of the process is around 70 degrees centigrade. About 250 to 300 grams of salt per 100 meter cube of crude is removed in this process. At this operating temperature, the viscosity of crude is sufficiently low for removal of salts associated with the crude. Next operation, very important one, is distillation. The crude is separated into various fractions depending upon the boiling point range. Higher boiling point fractions, about 450 degrees centigrade, may be subjected further to vacuum distillation. It is easy to find out the volume that is present for a given temperature range or the cut. The distillation is a separation process based upon the physical property of material, vapor pressure as a function of temperature and pressure. The primary distillation separates the crude into fractions consisting of mixtures of various organic materials. It does not yield any pure or near pure substance. Most substances exist in three forms, solid, liquid and gas, that is vapor. The typical crude is separated into seven or eight fractions. The lighter fractions contain lower number of carbon atoms. These are separated from the top of distillation equipment or column. The higher boiling point fractions are separated from the middle point of the distillation column and fractions of very high boiling point are removed from the bottom of the column. A typical separation process is shown schematically. So crude enters as it is seen here. Fraction one, mainly gases boiling point less than 40 degrees centigrade, fraction 2, boiling point up to 150 degrees centigrade, fraction 3, boiling point up to 200 degrees centigrade. Likewise, we can see various fractions. What it means is that fraction 2 will have the materials where the boiling point is more than 40 degrees and maximum temperature is about 150. Fraction 3 will have liquids which will have boiling point more than 150 and up to about 200. Likewise, we are now separating the various fractions. So top fraction would be gases where maximum boiling point could be 40 degrees centigrade. Second fraction will have maximum boiling point of 150. Third fraction will have maximum boiling point of about 200. And depending upon the crude composition, the number of components present in these fractions will change. And as you can see fraction seven and eight, boiling point is over 450 degrees centigrade. Therefore, Sometimes these fractions are subjected to vacuum distillation so that boiling point reduces and you can separate some of the materials. Different fractions are designated also as top or light fractions, middle range fractions and bottom or heavy fractions. A typical curve of percent volume fraction over different boiling point temperature for our crude oil is shown. 
the volume between two temperature is the fraction over the temperature range. This helps in separating the crude in different fractions. Distillation has two sections, atmospheric distillation unit abbreviated as ADU and vacuum distillation unit VDU. The ADU is the first prominent unit. In any distillation unit, vapors are condensed at the top of the column and part of the condensed liquid distillate is admitted into the distillation column. This is called as the reflux. So, reflux helps you to maintain the stability of distillation column. The liquid at the bottom is partly vaporized in the reboiler and the vapors are again admitted back into the column. Therefore, part of the liquid which is condensed is coming back to the distillation column and also part of the liquid coming out from the bottom is vaporized and put back into the distillation column which helps you to get a very good stability of the distillation column. When vapors are condensed, heat is released as latent heat of condensation. This heat has to be removed. In most refineries, crude oil is used to cool the vapors of the ADU. In turn, the ADU is heated which is desired for desalting. The heat recovery is an important parameter of any refinery. It is many times referred to as heat recovery network because in a given refinery there are places where heat is to be removed and there are places where heat is to be added. So these two are linked together through the heat recovery network. A typical schematic is shown here. The crude oil is coming into a heat exchanger, it gets heated and that heat exchanger is doing the condensation of vapors coming from the distillation column. So vapors get condensed, they get cooled and crude gets heated and it goes for the desorting process. There are many streams and processes which need heating. Similarly, there are processes and chemical reactions where heat is to be removed. A proper network combines streams in such a way that proper heat balance is achieved so that wherever there is heat is being removed that is recovered and it is added to those operations where heat is to be added. This optimization is extremely important in minimizing the energy cost and that is one of the most important parameters in any refinery. In specifying the crude, one of the methods is to present cuts over range of temperature zone as discussed earlier. Another method is to represent these cuts as per the middle boiling point, called also as mid boiling point of the cut and also the boiling point of major pure components of that cut. For that, ASTM method is normally widely followed. A test sample of oil fraction is boiled. The temperature and corresponding vapor pressure of portion condensed are noted as the distillate proceeds. Temperature are plotted against the distillate removed and this is a typical ASTM distillation curve. Now we shall see typical composition what we get from one barrel of crude oil. For a 35 API crude feedstock, LPG is about 1.4%, naphtha 25.6%, gas oil 21.2% and fuel oil is 41.2%. So basically it's mainly used for the fuels. What is alkylation? As the name suggests, the alkyl group is added, so isobutylene and isobutene, which is unsaturated olefinic compound, they react to produce isobutene octane, which is a branch material, which improves the octane value of the gasoline. The straight run fuels like kerosene, gasoline or diesel are mixtures of many, many chemicals. These are used as such with some minor changes, keeping in mind the specifications from pollution point of view and also the performance of these fuels in burning characteristics. The flash point, viscosity, octane number and C10 number are few of the characteristics which are of importance for any fuel, particularly for auto fuel. In addition to that, octane number is important. This is related to the resistance of gasoline to knock or detonation in a cylinder of a gasoline engine. Higher octane number denotes better efficiency of fuel to produce work and better anti-knock characteristics. Octane number is defined as that percentage of isooctane and normal heptane which exactly matches the knock characteristics of a blend containing of 90% of isooctane and 10% of normal heptane. The octane number is very important because earlier parts, way back, more than 50 years ago, the gasoline will not fire well and therefore it will make a noise of knocking. So now that is removed and that is 
uh, available or that is obtained by alkylation. Extraction, as I said, will be using a solvent and they remove the materials like benzene, toluene and xylene which are much higher in value. Remaining part is used as a fuel. So upgrading the naphtha and lubricating oil is possible with extraction. So that what we are doing by upgrading, we are removing the materials like benzene, toluene etc. Extraction is a separate process that we will not consider because it is a physical process. Value addition is achieved through recovery of important aromatics. What are the major features of refinery? Very large inventory requires very large size equipments and therefore larger space and it adds to the cost of the process. Process water, steam, air and electricity need to be used very properly and in an optimum way, in an economic way. Optimization at every stage is essential. Design of refinery or the process technology should have features to handle different types of crude. Not only one type of crude because crudes they vary in their composition. Petroleum distillation is carried out at atmospheric pressure to separate gases, naphtha, middle distillates and heavy fractions. The residual heavy fractions are then subjected to vacuum distillation to separate vacuum gas, lubricating oils and asphalt or pitch. Cracking of natural gas, naphtha and some higher fractions yield ethylene, propylene, butenes and pyrolysis oil as well as paintings. Catalytic reforming of naphtha use benzene, toluene and xylenes. These are very important chemicals. The seven members C1, C2, C3, C4, C6, C7 and C8 are major basic fractions which yield other petrochemicals. In this, we did not put C5 because it's a cyclic compound and it has limited uses. Therefore, we didn't consider it here. But C5 is also one of the important building blocks which we have seen earlier. These can be termed as pillars of organic chemical or petrochemical industry.